Hi, good morning. Did you get the paper? It's a special edition. Thank you. Fake editions of the Washington Post were handed out at multiple locations in Washington, D.C. on January 16th, including outside of the White House. And I look at this paper, and though it is very convincing uh, in terms of mimicking the post uh, masthead, our fonts, the entire look of the paper was very similar, um, that it was clearly some sort of fake uh, newspaper. It was sort of a fantasy future uh, vision of the country um, and a vision of our newspaper covering this, um, where the president had left the Oval Office uh, in the wake of massive um, uprising by citizens, particularly women-led marches. The Yes Men Group, which describes itself as a, quote, trickster activist collective, claimed responsibility for the phony newspaper and a matching website. The Yes Men are known as a leftist activist group who often organize pranks to cause disruption. This is something they do to get attention for their cause. Um, he saw it as sort of laying out a vision of what could be and using this, or activists using this as sort of a, a guidebook for how to get there. Now the motivation for making it look very similar to the Washington Post, that was about attention. They printed 25,000 copies, um, about 10,000 of which are on the street right now, and the entire effort cost about $40,000. The Yes Men group pulled a similar stunt in 2008, creating a fake copy of the New York Times, in which liberal activists pressured former President Barack Obama to push for progressive goals. We would blanket Manhattan with 100,000 copies of our very own newspaper. We'd call it the New York Times. But I think it's interesting it's in a different context. In 2008, you didn't have a president who was attacking the media. And, you know, now we're in an age where, where that's the case. So it's, it's being read a, a different sort of way. The timing of the latest Washington Post prank has raised concerns about how it could impact a growing mistrust in the media. Perhaps there's some further erosion of the credibility and trustworthiness of news sources, and I think that's problematic and probably counterintuitive to some of these liberal groups' goals.